Carlos Pichardo. I am the MFA Program Director here at Rosemont College, and I'm the Editorial Director of Philadelphia Stories. Um, I'm so happy that so many of you could join us today for the celebration of the uh, Sandy Crimmins Prize for Poetry and the crowning of the Montgomery County Poet Laureate. Events like these are the more special for how rare they are. And the Sandy Crimmins Prize for Poetry is uh, the kind of commission that is most meaningful when it's paid forward. What I'm trying to say is that you should go forth and make stanzas. <laughs> Emily Rose Cole really stood out, and she was not, not just uh, excruciatingly beautiful in particular in her imagery. Uh, there was also this fearless, heartbreaking quality and a sureness of style and a depth of feeling. Please welcome Emily Rose Cole. Self-portrait as Rapunzel. One, my mother built her tower out of baby teeth broken on stale communion wafers, out of dogs choked by chicken bones, empty medicine cabinets, every lullaby her mother never sang her. When I was born, she mixed a mortar of bent needles, busted harp strings, and porcupine quills pulled from beneath her fingernails. One day, she told me, gold dust will pool in the hollow of your tongue. Roses will track their roots in your spine. Your body will chip like shale rock chiseled by rain. Two, she shut me in. No door, one locked window, a keyhole cut in the shape of my name. I stayed inside for years, afraid of anything that carried its shadow too close to itself. My mother hoisted baskets of mint and dill. She wrote notes that ended with for your own good and planted morning glories that opened like eyes. Three, when a prince arrived, he used words like trapped and escape. I offered a rope woven from daisy stems, but he said my hair was stronger. The shorn end of the braid thumped the grass like a feathered body striking stones. Years later, after he left me, I cut a keyhole. I cut. I carved a hole in the shape of my tongue. I came home. The tower had fallen. My mother's last gift: a handful of pebbles shaping a word, grow. I built my tower out of nettles and closed doors and dropped seeds into my eyes. Now, red petals curl behind my teeth. Pollen smears my lips. Bees drone at the corners of my mouth. I swallow secrets that harden into keys. All night, I listen to locks sliding shut. Help me welcome Catherine Ayanada. It's called Yield Signs Don't Exist. Rob ran a solid red, first car in pilgrimage to Rocky Horror Picture Show. He flipped a gaze back. I didn't lose the girls? Oh man, I think I'm in love. <laughs> you remind me of that Zeppelin line, A said. When you look in the mirror, baby, do you like it? All the chicks here are after Mike, Rob said. He was wearing my feather boa. Patted my shoulder, focused on the high heel parade. Don't worry, don't worry. I've seen you here before, Jay said. Eyes slant under sun. I like those jeans you got on. I haven't seen you for a while, the train conductor said. Punch bullet holes in my ticket. You look good, how you been? M said a lot, but I remember nothing, because I was looking at his arms on the wheel, bone and muscle shift and pop on sharp turns. He drove me to the high school at night. This was my space, he said. The guy across had a Mustang, too but his didn't stall. Don't tell them it's your first show, he said. Hand on my back now. I took a too deep breath. My garter belt split. The lipstick your forehead and make you dance grind with a blow-up doll. <laughs> the poem you wrote made me cry, he said, so I was no longer afraid of his trunk full of rope, tarps, hand saws. <laughs> I'm still building, he said. I'll keep cutting until I get it right. You call me if it don't work out, Jay said. We rolled through a stop sign. You rolled through that stop sign, the cop said. Didn't you see it? <laughs> Sorry I don't drive so careful, he said. Long hair spilled out a cracked window, and now he didn't look at me. You know how men drive, Rob said once. Red lights are stop signs, stop signs are yield signs, and yield signs don't exist. Mm. Thank you. Inside the oven, there are secrets. Crusts that burned and flaked. Drippings, black bubble smoke rising each time she fires up. She says, 
I need bitter lemons to sweeten, brown bananas, sour milk. Give me chocolate so dark it chokes you. You train yourself to listen. Give the oven what she wants, and she gives you coconut custard, marble pound, red velvet cupcakes, cranberry scones. You tune out the cacophony. Mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> Doorbell ringing women who want you to be saved. Men who want to save you more on your gas bill. <laughs> Sometimes the oven says eggs, bacon, gruyere, chives. You obey without hesitation. <laughs> Other voices hurl pages of unwritten poems, echoes. Your husband's lover singing, yes, yes, oh God, yes. And him, there has never been another woman more beautiful. Uh. You do not listen. You lean in closer to the oven, closer still, deep inside where it's quietest. Maybe today will be your day to change, to puff and flake, turn golden and rise without sinking in the center. Dog, come here into the dark house. Come here, black dog. This is based on an etching by a surrealist artist named Leonora Carrington. At night, when barred owls ask, who cooks for you? She sits by the window. No one cooks for her. She has a black dog and coral night. The moon offers stepladders of gleam. Preferring the dark, she closes shutters at dawn. Of course people say she must be lonely. They're right. She thinks loneliness is like a maple tree she counts on to change colors. Besides, with a black dog, who could feel too alone? His tail made of butterflies and zinnias, he barks and a glass of red wine appears. Quite the dog about town, yet faithful as a hard crossword puzzle in a Sunday paper. Her windows open and close, but rarely break. She knows that cracking glass will announce her own death. She sees it faintly through dusty panes, smiles before turning away. This poem is called Thirst, and it's also about travel. <clears throat> From Mexico, I brought you a silver and red heart, a tin corazon to decorate our Christmas tree, and after a night in a luckless bar, El Gato Negro, a cocktail recipe, tequila and grapefruit soda, paloma, the Spanish word for dove, the same pale name as the stubborn horse I rode through Guanajuato without you by my side. I don't know what I drank that other night in even unluckier bar in old San Miguel. Tecate, Negro Modelo, some other cheap local beer. La Cucaracha, the cockroach dive that would not die, where beats like Kerouac and Cassidy loved and fought, and where local drunkards sighed at my American jibes as though I'd Yoto sized me up from the back wall. I missed you then, like I did this summer in Shanghai, on wild Nanjing Road, drinking Heineken's with a Hawaiian named Billy, who never met a bottle of Baiju he didn't like. It helped him chase hookers along the city's neon strip. Baiju, rot gut Chinese white lightning, distilled from sorghum, barley, or millet. One swig from Billy's tiny green bottle, and I quickly had my fill of it. Never brought any home from the trip, only stories of strange fruits, fried scorpions, whiskered fish, of the giant Buddhas carved from the Yungang grottos, of the ancient monastery clinging to the Hengshen cliffs. I climbed the Great Wall, sang karaoke in Pingyao, made a friend over a bottle or two of scotch, but for three weeks among strangers in dirty coal-burning country, it wasn't just blue sky I missed. On my way home, I bought you a bottle of Crown Royal from Toronto, duty-free and flavored with maple, because I like to imagine the sight of you in your boxers, bringing pancakes to our breakfast table. Something new to slake our, your thirst, I said, handing the brown bottle over. You told me to add ice cubes and keep the drink simple. We'll call it a Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> These days, it seems I'm always returning from somewhere far off, even if it's just back to our conversation at the table. Our lives drink up the years, I want to say. 
They burn like a dragon. They sing like a dove. Don't hate me because I can't keep still. I need to fill my cup up to the brim. I'd drink your heart right now if I could, even if it were silver and red and made of tin.